Hi, this is a demo to show you how you can draw 2D plans uh, of this 3D isometric graphic that we have uh, for exercise 4. And so this is just the basic skills on how to draw a 2D object or a 2D set of plans to represent that 3D object. Uh, I'm going to start this by drawing the top view of this particular piece. I'm going to turn off the camera's perspective so it gets, away, gets rid of annoying lines and the like. And before I start, I better make note of what the dimensions of this thing is from the very top. And I'm going to go with the very roughest of dimensions. There's eight units going from uh, here to here. And along the back part of it, it looks like we have four, eight, twelve units that will represent that. So I'm just going to start by making an, a twelve by eight rectangle on the, on the top quadrant to draw this thing. And I'm going to use the rectangle tool, I think, to do this first time around. I'm going to type 12, comma, 8, and lo and behold, I get the pretty much the right size and right shape right away. Uh, now I'm going to start carving pieces of it away for this top view. I find this is a nice easy way to get started. I can see I've got a wall here that's going to be 8 units across and 3 units in height. So I'm going to start again at the origin, drag across, and type in 8, comma, 3. And now I know I can use the eraser tool and get rid of that chunk. Now I have to take out a 2x2 two two chunk over in the back right corner, rect or rectangle or square tool again here, 2, comma 2, and an eraser tool. And I've almost completed the, the top view. There are some edges that should appear here. I can see one that's sort of four units uh, and four units away from the outside. So it's the midpoint of this particular face here. And then there's going to be another one going all, all the way across from this little jetty that comes out four units from that side. In drawing this, I'll use the pencil tool. And I know this thing starts about the halfway point, the midpoint, and SketchUp will infer the midpoint. So that one's an easy one. And this one is simply an extension of this. So I've got just about the complete top view done here. I may want to start pulling out some dimensions to make sure I have things just right. And I can start pulling those dimensions out using the dimensioning tool. And I'll start with this wall looks like I should be measuring this, and this, and this, maybe this as well. I can also pull out this wall, and if I know this is 4 inches, and this is 2 inches, and this is 2, I know that this is 8 inches, I'm not going to pull any more dimensions out this way. And if I know this thing is going to be 8, and I've got, uh, oh, maybe I should pull this one out here too, 3 inches, that pretty much represents the entire model. And there's your top view. Now before I go any further with this, I'm going to start pulling this thing away from the origin. I'm going to right mouse click it and group it. And I'll use the move tool to move this thing so it's a, got a little bit of a margin inside of there. But I'll start it just about there. Now the next faces that I might want to do, from the front view I can see I've got to make something that's going to be 8 units tall and 4 over. And it's got to align with the top view. So I'm going to use the pencil tool and I'm going to use inferencing. I'll hover down about here and I will start drawing this thing and I know this thing is going to be four units across so I'll simply type four and you'll notice it absolutely aligns with this edge as it must. I'll start drawing it here eight units I'll type an eight and hit enter and if you have to we could zoom extends I'm just zooming in to get it and again that inferencing is absolutely making it easy to finish this thing off so I've got that wall represented from the front view. Top and front. The height of this thing, it goes down two units and starts drawing out from here. But I'm going to start from the easy place. I'm going to keep on building from one corner and keep working my way out. So I know from that bottom edge, I've got to go eight units across. And I'll use that old thing. It's going to be, I'll start with a big rectangle. Uh, eight across and one, two, three, four, five, six tall from the looks of things. So I'll start here. Go eight units over and six up and then bring it up across and I finish this. Now I know there's going to be a chunk that comes out here that's going to be 4 by 3. Okay, I'll start that right about, let's see where this makes the most sense, 4 by 3. Well I know this is going to be 3 units up there and 3 units down there. That's the midpoint. But if you, if you don't want to guess at this, you can also do this. Drag the tape measure from an edge and if I want to measure three units up, I can type in three to draw a guideline exactly where this is going to go. And now it gets really easy. Uh, again, I want to go in by four units and up by three. So I'll go four. And I know this thing's going to be three, and I can confirm it by looking in the bottom right corner. 
that this is three inches. And I'll erase that corner. Looking from this front face, this is completely uninterrupted here and uninterrupted here. I should only see two faces, and there they are there, one and two. And that guideline is no longer useful, so I'll erase it, make life easy. And you will notice with this that this is absolutely aligning these two elements because we inferenced from the top view to the front view. Everything's lining up absolutely perfectly. And we want to do that for the last face too. I want to imagine what it's going to look like from the right side, from over here, looking back. And once again, we have 8 by 8. So the thing's going to look like an 8 by 8 cube or an 8 by 8 square. So I will again use my, I think I'll use in this case, the rectangle tool. And I'll use inferencing to get a good starting place right about here. Click and drag, and I'll just type 8, 8 and hit enter. And I've got that shape. This line it goes across here by five units, and it goes up by six. Okay, I'll drag some guidelines for that. Tape measure. I know this thing has to go down by two units. If it's going to be six tall and the whole thing is eight tall, I'll drag a guideline at two. And I know I've got to drag a guideline about three units in. I could drag, drag it from the other side too, but I'm going this way. So there's three units in and two units down. And now once again, really, really easy to simply draw those shapes in there like that. And finally, it looks like we have something another three units down, but if you observe, three happens to be midway down this line that we've already created. So again, I could kind of go down here, find the midpoint, just drag it across. And the last thing is two units in. Looks like I've got one, two, and then I'm going to have another line going down. So I'll drag one. Two units in from the side, And everything should work out just about right. Use the eraser tool and I'll start cleaning these things up. And I'm going to zoom extents just to maximize where these things are showing up. And this is already taking good shape. Now the next thing we're going to want to do with these plans, I won't drag any more dimensions and we'll handle the isometric view in another video. But the last thing to do after we've created all these objects and we've got them all aligned, we want to put the template around this so we can put the name and sketch out the borders and the like. So that template we will find on the web page, up under plans, and you can see there's what we're trying to shoot for. We're trying to get all these things looking like this. You will find the template further on down. It's actually step three. And I'm going to click this template. I'm going to save it, and I'm going to open it. If at first you don't succeed, try again. Uh, there's the template that's been created for you already and has all the placeholders for things. I'm simply going to right mouse click and copy it. Oh, I won't right mouse click. I'm going to use edit and copy, or I could use control C. And I'll go back over. I'm using alt tab to get to my other SketchUp file. And I'm going to paste that template somewhere. This is not going to look exactly as expected. If we try putting it here, it might be a little bit small for where we want to put it, but I'll try. Actually, it's not a bad size for this particular piece. I'll use the Move tool to kind of orient this thing right to the very center like this, and I'll use the Zoom or zoom Extents to try to put it exactly where it should be. You know, it fits the space pretty well, but you can still resize things if you need to. So if this is looking like it's a little bit big for this piece, or if it's a little bit small for later pieces, you can use the Scale tool and grab a corner and shrink things up a little bit. And move. And you just keep on adjusting these items until they kind of max out and, and, and fit exactly where you want them. One thing I also notice about this, the template for some strange reason has some mystery object grouped in there. It's not a bad idea at this point to, to grab the, te the template right mouse click it and explode it and it breaks it into its component pieces so there's nothing else that's in the way. Zoom extents and this thing's almost ready to print. You've got to double click the uh, name information and fill in the blanks there and I would also suggest you know what these dimensions are looking a little big so go to window and model info find your dimensions select all your dimensions and change the font to something a little more conservative like eight points say okay I would also suggest why don't you change the color of the thing to a nice blue color as well. 
so it doesn't conflict with the lines and faces and edges. And then remember, after you've made these changes, click Update Selected Dimensions. And normally that works. I'm having problems with it right now. Let's try this again. Because it's all grouped. Hmm. I'll try again. Select all dimensions, update. Yeah, that fixed it. So for some reason, this these objects, this object was all grouped. I'm going to explode it too. I wonder why it got grouped. Oh, maybe I did group that initially. So this is making the dimensions nice and distinctive from the outsides. So there's a, a start to modeling this thing. doesn't take long to do. It does demand that you understand how SketchUp works and give it a try. This is a great way to learn how to use SketchUp.